Hi YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps. Okay, and this is a fun tutorial here. It's all about bottle caps. Bottle caps have been hot for a long time, and I think they are going to forever be hot. But have you ever seen a bottle cap shaker charm? Mm-hmm. That is what I have been making, and I am going to show you how you can make your own bottle cap shaker charms. Now, some shake and some don't. It all depends on what you want. But you are looking at three different styles of bottle cap shaker charms. And, and I will show you how you can make each type. So cool. Here, I've added an epoxy sticker on the inside. And my Shake Shake is all different types. I use the confetti glitter. Of course, I use sequins. Have some micro beads in there. And if you don't want to use it as a charm, you could use it as a standalone piece. Some have more Shake Shake than others. I love the monograms because you can personalize anybody's name. And bottle caps are really inexpensive and they come in any color imaginable. And of course you can always spray paint your own. So let me show you the back of these. And by the way, I have not added all of my charms on and you don't have to. So as you can see here, I have different prints and patterns going on. I got some animal prints, checker print, solid prints, this print here, and this one here. And these were not hard to make at all, especially with all my trial and error. I have really made it simple. Now, in this video, we're going to be making this bottle cap charm. And I call this one the half cup. We'll also make this one. And it's the flattened bottle cap shaker. And we will also make this one, which is the full cup bottle cap shaker. In addition to that, we will make a larger bottle cap shaker charm. Okay, so the first bottle cap shaker I'm going to make is this type here and I call this the half full cup because you have a frame within the center and I think it might be well I don't want to say it's probably the easiest now another good reason why you would want to have the dies over a punch is because for this particular charm you do need to die cut foam and if you don't have the very thin foam like the one millimeter or 0.5 millimeter these are two millimeter and then your punches probably won't work I just have one punch out of dozens of punches that can actually cut out foam and that's with the struggle and so I have used two of my circle dies to create what you see here and I've left both pieces attached to each other to punch out a hole in my bottle cap you really want to pay attention to where you punch because if you punch in the wrong place you might not be able to add your jump ring so the way I do it it's real simple I'm not sure if you could see where I'm punching but you could see the hole right there so basically I'm punching in this area here you could see and I wanted to point out as well that you can take a, a old bottle cap these still have the liners in it and practice your punching that's exactly what I did you can have your friends and family save you bottle caps too you know those that drink beer or drink soda so your whole size will determine what size jump rings or other findings that you can use 
So I have two layers of foam. I'm going to peel back the sticky on the frame part, not the center part, and add that there. Now, you could use up to three layers of foam if you like. One of my shakers, I think this one here, I used three layers. And on the others, I just used two layers. So you can save these because now you have a um, foam dot. And pull the center part out. And now, I have my frame in there. So what I'm gonna do is take some powder and add that around the inside to deactivate any adhesive and blow. So I forgot to mention a step. If you want to add a sticker, a rub-on, or in my case, I'm gonna add a tile, you could do that before you add your foam. So I'm going to use glossy accents. I'm going to have to let that dry a little bit. No, I'm going to go ahead and add my sequins. So for this bottle cap shaker, I will be using micro beads. I'm going to use black. Now when you make shakers, of course, you know that you need to have acetate. So what I'm going to do is add glossy accents around the black foam. Now, I like to use these micro brushes. These are great. I'm going to do a video showing you 10 ways you can use these micro brushes. And this is one way right here. I want to remove any excess glossy accents and then I'll use a wipe to clean that tip off and then I'm going to add my acetate. Now you can use alcohol to rub on your acetate if you had a, if you have a static problem. I didn't do that here. Now you want to be careful not to move that too much because you need for that glue to dry. And what I normally do is take a bottle cap that I've done already and set it on top. Why not just set several and let that dry? Okay, so it has dried. Oh, but one thing, <laughs> and I forget this quite often, um, you want to pay attention to the orientation of whatever you put on the inside. In my case, it's a tile because I punched my hole there, but... I put my tile in the opposite way. So another thing you want to pay attention to as well, when you punch a hole and you use micro beads, the micro beads will come out your hole. So in this case, I'm going to have to add a dab of hot glue because I hear it coming out to cover that hole up and then try to pierce me another hole in this area here. In addition, I have micro beads that are coming out of this area here, and that's because when I laid down my acetate, I had micro beads there. I should have used my micro brush to put those back in the center. Easy fix. I'm just going to take glossy accents and or around the perimeter. You don't have to add a frame it just kind of depends on what type of glue that you use um, and by the way I've never had to do this step before this is the first time but I'm going to add a frame to mine I have adhesive on the back of my paper but because I have added glossy accents I'm just going to go ahead and add my paper frame down now. Once again, if you use a clear glue, you don't need a frame. Or if you just like how it looks, you can add one. So I'm going to let that dry. 
but you see it shakes and nothing comes out and it's cute but now I have to add my hole so with this particular charm you can probably add I don't remember if you can add it after but I'll find out because sometimes if you pierce it the wrong way you will bend your bottle cap so and you could do one or two holes I'm gonna do two in this case now one thing I will point out about these and maybe I should have I, I forget but I should have punched it this way because because I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up but there is a little bit of metal that's sticking out there I could take some pliers and flatten that out but I would have had it sticking out this way if I would have punched that way so that's something to consider as well but if you practice enough you'll get the hang of it so this is how this one looks and it shakes and it's really cute and I can go in this is cording go through the back because the back is smooth and you could pick this up at Michaels I got mine in a variety pack I think I got 12 colors so you don't have to use a jump ring you can yeah, so use now I'm going to make this style bottle cap I call this the full cup bottle cap and this is really easy to make you don't need foam for this one so you can use your punches if your punches can punch out acetate some punches can and some can't but this one is really easy to make now um, there is another step for this type of so I'm going to start off with my bottle cap this is colored on both sides um, I do have a lot of bottle caps that's colored on one side and if you were worried about like this one it's red on this side and the silver in the inside you can use your punch to die cut paper I did on some of my charms and then for this part here you can use stays on and I just cut up little pieces of foam from a foam pad use that to color the rim and it works really well and I have one of here I can show you once I find it I'm going to use this brown metallic bottle cap and I am going to punch first because with this particular one so I'm pretty much going to punch all the way towards the base in the back and I'll do two holes And you see my holes are right at this part here and I'm going to use another tile a different color I'm going to add glossy accents there and I'm going to take my micro brush because I added way too much you know no I'll just come back I'll let it dry so I've added two holes for this one because I want to use because I'm going to be covering up the top with the acetate and if I use a jump ring I'm going to have an opening right there so I think it's just easier to make the two holes and I'm going to try to use wire because this is the step where you want to add whatever you'll be using to hang I don't even know how wire gonna look <laughs> now I'm going to add some sequins okay so this is where I did a lot of trial and error because trying to adhere the acetate to the bottle cap well a lot of times it just popped right off because you don't have a lot of, a lot of space you're basically adhering glue to the edges which is really not enough and so I used tacky um, 
glue. I used double stick tape. I used, I don't know how many different types of glues. And this is the best method that has worked thus far. I did use glossy accents and I'm going to do it again here, but you need to do something else. In addition to using glossy accents, I'm going to add glossy accents around the perimeter of my circle and use my micro brush. I usually hold it hold it in my hand, but I'm trying to show it in the camera. And be careful that you don't get any glue in the center of your acetate. Careful that you don't shake this because you don't want your sequins to get stuck to the wet glue. So I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so my glue has dried. Now, you can stop at this step. It just kind of depends if you were able to achieve a good seal with your glue. I appear to have a good seal here, so I could stop. But if I had have used micro beads or the um, very small glitter, it's very possible, well, definitely possible for the micro beads to fit through those little openings right there. So the next step would be you need to add a seal. And after a lot of trial and error, the good old glue gun worked the best. In particular this one because it has this thinner tip so what I do and I'm only going to do part of it because I'm standing in back of my camera is add a little bit of glue along the perimeter okay so I have added glue around the perimeter and this is how the back side looks but don't fret because you can use your scissors and cut back the excess. Okay. So I peel back too much, so I'm going to go back and add glue to that side. So I just added more and I'm not going to even have to cut it back because with that particular glue gun I used, <clears throat> it really does disperse a little bit of glue I might cut back that part. This is how the front looks, and this is how the back looks. Not bad, but it don't look bad at all. And the front doesn't look bad either. And so um, I could add a liner like I did here, but I'm not because I think that looks pretty good. And and it shakes. So this was the first shaker bottle cap that I made and the brown one is the second one. And you can see how different they look. Okay so the next bottle cap is the flattened bottle cap that looks like this. And so here's my bottle cap. It's white on both sides and I'm going to punch out my hole first but I'm going to turn my bottle cap this way and I want to punch as close to the bottom as possible and I'm punching in between the grooves and you see the hole there so the bottle cap needs to be flattened and I'm going to use my wizard. This is by Spellbinders. I have had this since before the Cricut came out. And it makes the best flattened bottle caps ever. There are YouTube tutorials for other machines, but I think Stacy probably started the bottle cap flattening with her, um, her die cutting machine. And so I'm going to use this. bottle caps come out perfect. I've tried my Big Shot Pro and Cuddlebug and probably the Big Shot too. 
using various recipes and I cannot get a bottle cap that comes out perfect like this and it's perfect every time so so I'm going to add my jump ring I found this at Joann's and it's so cute it's a square so you can now get jump rings in different shapes perhaps they have been available I don't do a lot of jewelry making so I wouldn't know but I wanted to find something easier than the circular jump rings so I wanted to try these out Ooh, and that was easy to do now for this type of bottle cap I have added paper to a double stick tape and that's perfect if you have a bottle cap that's color on the back side but silver so if you want to change the look of that I want to add a sticker a number sticker because you can customize these for someone's birthday or a special day and I'm going to add my sequin so now it's time to add glossy accents and because it's flattened I can add the glossy accents right to the bottle cap. Press down a little bit. Don't want to shake it because you need for your glue to dry. And if you look at this one, I use the same process. On the inside, that's an actual page from the Bible, but I added way too many confetti in there. And this one has a frame, so you don't have to use the frame, or you can, just depends on what look you want. And this one also has a frame. Now, these little hooks here, those are eye screw, screw eye hooks and I have those in two different sizes this is the larger of the two I have let me so these are the two sizes that I have and the ones in here are the larger size I ordered the shorter ones because I didn't want too much to show here but with the smaller ones they can come out of the hole because they're smaller but a little bit of hot glue can seal that in I didn't seal any of the larger ones in like this one has a large one and it, it hasn't come out I just screw it in and you can't even see the bottom of it here so yeah let me screw this one out a little bit so you can barely see it now and I think it looks okay on the top because if you screw the right depth or if you turn it around you I mean even if from the back it you know it don't look bad so but I wanted to point out something too if you forget to punch your hole and you flatten it first well let's see what happens every time I've done it it has bent oh well that time don't look bad okay so this cap has completely dried and if you have a good seal your bottle cap charm is completed but I'm going to make this one really quick. I've added my adhesive backed paper because I would normally, to ensure a really, really, really good seal, I would add a liner of, with double stick tape. I added a liner because I felt that, I don't know, with the double stick tape, it provided a better seal. So now I'm going to add my jump ring and my adhesive covered it, but I could still see it from the back. 
Okay, so I just follow the same steps as with the other bottle caps. I wanted to show this step because I think when you add the double stick tape with the paper, once again, it adds a better seal. So now I'm going to take my glossy accents and add glue just around the perimeter to smooth it out. Oops. And I actually have sequins on top of the rim. Not sure if you can see it, but anyway, I'm going to seal it down, press it, let it dry. And in my opinion, this provides the best seal. Okay, so this one has dried nicely. And this is how it looks. I'm going to use a bigger bottle cap. Now, I have not used these to make shakers yet. So, not too sure how it's going to turn out. So, I used a punch to die cut out my center piece that fits right in there. And I've die cut out the letters 40 that I'm going to add to the back. side is dry and I've taken an artist pen and attached it to the bottom hole and then I use one of the small eye hooks that I showed you earlier and attached it there these are just so much easier to use than the jump rings but I added a little bit of glue on the inside to secure it because the hole is bigger than this particular eye pen so now I am going to add my sequins. So what I really wanted to do was add the number 40 right here, but I got tired of looking for what I was looking for, so I'm not going to add anything, oops, except my sequins. I'm going to add some crushed glitter. This is by Recollections. Okay, so this one dried, mm -hmm. and as you can see, my cake was still a little wet, so some of the glass glitter got stuck where the icing was supposed to be. So I have glass glitter icing now. And following the previous method, I added the acetate with glossy accents, and then I added a seal of hot glue around the perimeter and I did trim it and this is how it looks now I'm gonna go ahead and add my charms so I have these large very strong jump rings and I open them up using I don't know the names of them they're not needle nose I don't think but anyway these two things here and you do have to use these plier type thing to open and close because these are really heavy so I finished up adding some charms nothing difficult to do I added a cross with a jump ring and a charm that says beauty with another jump ring and on top I added a cake that reminded me of the cake on the inside you can't see the well the base is the same color and I molded this from a button so that's a resin piece that I've colored in the back I've added 40 a little messy back there and yeah this is my completed 
bottle cap shaker. Oh, I was going to make a flat bottle cap shaker like this one, but didn't do a really good job in the spell binders wizard machine because this is larger. And so I'm not going to do that. Well, Maybe I'll play with that a little bit basic later. Supplies you will need. So bottle caps are circle. So you are definitely going to need to have dies and or punches. Now, depending on what style you make, you may not need all the supplies I'm going to list because all these supplies cover all three different types. Now, I used this circle set by We Are Memory Keepers. It's great because it has 21 dies. So these are not all the circles that came. But you get circles ranging from, I think it's under a half an inch all the way up to 5.5 inches. So whatever size circle you need in between, you get it with this set. So it's great to have. You're going to also need punches if you don't have um, dies. But depending on what type of punch you have, you may not be able to cut through the acetate that you're going to need. You're going to need something to pierce the hole through your bottle cap. This is called a Euro punch. It's 1.25 millimeter in size. They come in two different sizes. The larger size is 1.8, I believe. I got this from Amazon for about $11 prime. It makes punching your holes in your bottle caps really easy. It's a good investment. So of course you're going to need your sequins and whatever you would like to use as your shake shake. I have micro beads and the confetti sequin shapes. As my wet glue, I use glossy accents. Um, I tried out many different types of adhesives and this one works the best thus far. And I have it in this nice fine line applicator. Love this. So if you're using jump rings, you will need something to open and close your jump rings with, depending on what type of jump ring you're using. So this looks like pliers. And you're going to need whatever you're going to use to hang your charms from. I have used different types of materials, but I'm showing you the cord because it's really easy to use this and I really do like it. You may or may not need to use double stick tape, but I use this with my flattened bottle cap. So if you don't make that type, you will not need it. And a micro brush. I am loving this little tool here. It's great. I'm going to be doing a video showing you 10 ways you can use this. And one of the ways is in this video. And then you will need a hot glue gun, depending on which one you make. And this is the type of glue gun I'm using with this fine line tip. And then you will need whatever you're going to use to make your or turn your bottle caps into charms and whatever type of findings you have. I'll be using these tile monograms. You could use stickers because I did make some with stickers or rub-ons, just whatever you have on hand. And of course, you can use these type of closures. This is a jump ring, a square shape jump ring. These are the jumbo. These are really, really heavy and thick. And then you could use these type of fasteners. I use those and they come in different colors on some of my charms. And then you could use an artist pen. I have these in different colors. But my favorite are these screw eyes here, which come in different sizes. These are so much easier to use when you are, let me find one. They're so much easier to use than jump rings, and I absolutely love it. And then I have a little crystal heart here. I use beads and other findings that are showing right here. And finally, you're going to need your bottle caps. Now, once again, they come in a wealth of different types of colors and even sizes. You can buy them 
color on both sides or color just on one side. And you can also buy them already flattened if you don't have a die cutting machine because you will need a die cutting machine or some type of mechanism to flatten your bottle caps if they are not already flattened. Um, I used my Spellbinders Wizard to flatten But I wanted mine. to show you again the different types of shakers that you can make. You can make this flat one. I like how these colors turned out. And you can make a full cup one. And, oh, did I make, yeah, I made two flat ones. And I'm missing one. You can also make a half cup. And then bottle caps come in different sizes, different shapes, and so you can definitely make one this size. Now I have a fun tutorial coming up using the larger bottle caps, a three and a half inch. We'll use this size as well. If you guys should have any questions, please feel free to ask. Well, do have a blessed day.